The Baltimore Ravens are looking to extend their winning streak to four against the Red Hot Washington Commanders in week six. We talk about what they have to do, final predictions, and so much more coming up on a game day edition episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here today on this game day, making Locked On Ravens both a part of your day and your first listen each and every single day. Your friend available for you on all podcasting platforms. That includes in video form on YouTube where you can like and subscribe to the channel, follow along there. Also follow along in audio form wherever you get your favorite podcast where you can subscribe over there as well for five days a week plus more of daily Ravens coverage. Today's game day edition of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first five dollar bet and you'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Baltimore Ravens looking to extend their winning streak to four games after starting zero and two. They're now at three and two, but the Washington Commanders are coming. To town, Jaden Daniels and company looking to stop Lamar Jackson. Obviously, the Ravens and Commanders defenses will have their hands full with two stud quarterbacks. So we're going to be diving into everything you need to know for game day. We do this every single game day. It's a new addition to what we do here over on Locked on Ravens this season. And just diving into everything. Keys to victory, predictions, games that you need to look out for. As well, looking out now that we're on like standings watch a little bit more, we're almost, it's crazy. After this game is over, after week six is done, we're officially a month and a half into the season. This feels like the season started yesterday. So we're, we're already moving pretty fast in this NFL season in 2024. But we're going to do, obviously, Ravens offense versus commander's defense, how both sides match up. We'll then flip the field, talk commander's offense versus Ravens defense, and then get into some final notes in the final part of the show. So let's just start off with this Ravens offense led by Lamar Jackson coming off of a 41-point performance against the Cincinnati Bengals. And look, we know that Cincinnati Bengals defense, not great. Well, for this Washington team, there are definitely some weaknesses starting off in the run game. Run defense for Washington this year has been not so good. They are second to last in the league in terms of net yards per attempt, giving up 5.1 yards per carry on the year so far. It doesn't mean they don't, they don't have talented players on that defensive line, right? Their front seven, I think, does have talent, but it just has not translated for them on the field, and teams are gashing them at a really high rate. So if I'm the Ravens, look, your bread and butter is running the football. I think you established that early, and even if it's not working, I think you continue to go back to that well until it absolutely works for you. I don't think this is going to be a situation where, you know, the Ravens and Commanders are both going to feel a need to abandon who they are in this game. I think that I'm expecting points in this game, right? I, I, that's my thing. I don't think it's going to be as high scoring as Ravens Bengals last week, but I certainly expect points in this game. But for Baltimore, establish that early, right? You can't let Washington's defense get away with taking away a part of your offense, especially a part of your offense that is so important because we know when that run offense is going, when Derrick Henry is going, Justice Hill, you know, when Lamar Jackson gets his carries as well, that rushing offense opens up the play action game. It keeps the opposing defense on their toes. And you want to have that element, especially against a defense that already struggles in itself to stop the run. I mean, you have to punish them for that. And so to me, I think that is where you have to go, especially because Baltimore and their run offense has been so good this season. I mean, of course, they're, they're number one or number two or just top five in so many different categories that way this year they're obviously number one in yards per attempt at 6.1 number one in yards over a thousand on the season obviously they run the ball the most out of any team as well this year so look establish that ground dominance but then obviously through the air get some there too right spread the ball around Lamar Jackson hit nine different receivers in that Cincinnati game last week 
And that should be the MO for this offense. It has been so far this season where usually in years past, it's been Lamar Jackson heavily favors one or two guys, Mark Andrews, usually being in that conversation and then a wide receiver, you know, it's been Marquise Brown in the past, Zay Flowers there, you know, these at this last year his rookie year at least, but now it's Lamar is just taking what's available, working that into this offense makes it so much more dangerous because teams can key in on a guy, but then there's just five other guys that can beat you and that you have to worry about. And we sort of saw this when Mark Andrews has gone down the past couple of seasons. When Mark wasn't there, Lamar was spreading the ball around. And I think a lot of people were talking about, well, the next step for Lamar is when Mark is on the field. Obviously, Mark will get his, and it's been a slow start to the season for him in terms of being the Mark Andrews we all know. But Mark's role is just is different this year. But I think it's for the betterment of the entire offensive unit. And so for Washington, their pass defense is in the middle of the pack. You know, they're, they're, it's nothing to write home about for them. Baltimore's passing offense, by the way, they're actually second in the league in terms of net yards per attempt. So this offense is high powered. They're high scoring. And honestly, their offense is still that way when the Ravens have been in positive game flow. And what that usually means is, hey, you know what? The Ravens or any team in positive game flow like the Ravens have been in a lot of their games so far this year. Oh, the Ravens will run the ball. But even so. They're still pushing the ball down the field. I would like to see them push the ball down the field a little bit more, you know, pure deep shots. I think Washington, and we'll get to this in the second part of the show, but I think Washington will aim to push the ball down the field. Obviously, Jaden Daniels and Terry McLaurin and other guys getting that deep passing game going. Not that you have to go shot for shot with the commanders. Like, obviously, don't let the, the Washington offense dictate what you do on the offensive side of the ball. There's so much that they can do, and – Again, we've we've seen it sometimes with this offense where they can get out of playing their game. Don't just don't get out of playing your game. I honestly think it's that simple where the commanders have talented defensive players, but you know, in that secondary, I feel like the Ravens can use some of their players to to their advantage here. You know, I think that obviously the linebackers right now are playing really well for Washington. Frankie Louvu came over from Carolina's a really solid option. Bobby Wagner. I know a Ravens legend. If uh, you were, if you remember the Ravens in that whole situation, they were being interested in him a couple seasons ago, but again, guys like Benjamin St. Juice, I think that you can take advantage, you know, of a guy like that. And they have a couple of other players who have stepped up for them and they have a lot of guys. They do, but, my point is that I think Baltimore's offensive personnel is more talented than Washington's defensive personnel. Doesn't mean that, you know, there are situations where Baltimore's offense doesn't not work in this game. There are also situations where Baltimore's offense, you know, doesn't work in this game, right? I think it can and it can't. But at the end of the day, I think that the Ravens, the game plan offensively, established the run early. Work play action off of your run. I mean, this should be the game plan every week. You have Derrick Henry. You have Lamar Jackson, right? You can go and, and run into guys like Jonathan Allen, who, again, really, I mean, they have so many guys on, on the interior that are so good. I mean, obviously, Deron Payne and Allen, who I mentioned, and they did, they actually, they drafted Johnny Newton in this past draft, and he obviously is a beast on that defensive line as well, coming out of Illinois. So, man. Just run the ball. If you can establish that, I think you're in a pretty good situation, especially in this game against a struggling run defense. If Washington is able to get off of the, the hook with their run defense, that's a problem, right? If, if Derrick Henry struggles, which, again, there are situations where it happens and situations where it doesn't. But if it does, if Henry struggles, that's an issue. But there are other ways the Ravens can win. Obviously, this offense is, is very deep and the personnel packages they can use are through the roof but i do expect heavy personnel obviously patrick card is going to be a key as always in stopping the washington pass rush from the interior so we'll see you know guys like daniel falele and all of that is he he's going to be a huge factor we'll talk about that in the final part of the show but in my opinion daniel falele is someone to watch but then you have guys also like dorance armstrong you know he's tied with frankie Lubu for sacks in the lead on this team. Jonathan Allen has two sacks on the interior. You know, these guys are talented, but 
this Baltimore team, I feel like, has a talent advantage. But, again, you have to go out there and execute on the field. And Washington is playing hot football right now, much like the Ravens are. But coming up in the second part of the show, the Ravens defense, not so hot right now. Obviously giving up 38 points to the Bengals. So coming up in the second part of the show, we'll be talking about how Baltimore's defense matches up with Washington's offense. Stay tuned a lot to get to on this game day edition of Locked on Ravens. First, this show is brought to you by Robinhood. With Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat at the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows others to get the rates and the perks, usually reserved for the high society. Now the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on the uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood um, Gold provides privileges of the high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for product-specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold LLC. And the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to own it to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on prize picks. And I love gold on prize picks, seeing all that they have to offer. They have so much over there, and there is so much to choose from. You can now run up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. And prize picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, prize picks discount select player projections of 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks over this Ravens and Commanders game. If you like the more on Lamar Jackson passing yards, more on Jaden Daniels passing yards, you can go over to prize picks. Down on the app today, use code Lockdown on Authority at $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, down on the app today, use code Lockdown on Authority at $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks run your game. We are back for our second segment, Locked on Ravens. Kevin Allstriker still here with you on this game day edition episode of the show. Appreciate everybody for tuning in on game day here. Whether you're getting ready for the game, maybe heading down to the stadium and, you know, maybe going to a tailgate or if you're getting ready, putting out some food, snacks, drinks for friends. Really appreciate you making Locked on Ravens a part of your day. We bring you five days a week of daily Ravens coverage Monday through Friday, but then also do bonus episodes like these game day edition episodes. We have bonus episodes on Saturday as well, which we had yesterday and I've been doing pretty regularly throughout the regular season because there are just so many headlines. And of course, we'll be going live after the game. So win or lose, we'll be going live here right after the game ends. We're breaking down everything that happened on the Ravens and Commanders game, so be sure to check out that live show or watch it on playback, both video form and audio form. Talked about the Ravens offense versus the Commanders defense. Let's flip the field. Let's talk Commanders offense versus Ravens defense. Obviously, the big story here is Jaden Daniels. Can you slow him down? Jaden Daniels has taken the league by storm, and look, I've I've been so impressed with Jaden, obviously, he came out of LSU as a very pro-ready quarterback and has been putting those skills to use over the first five weeks of the season. But if I'm Baltimore's defense, my number one goal here is to make Jaden Daniels as uncomfortable as possible. Uncomfortable as possible. Show him different looks, try to confuse him at the line, and try to get in his head. And, you know, Roquan Smith... He was talking some trash, saying, you know, he's just a rookie still. And, you know, he hasn't seen a defense like the Ravens defense before. And, you know, look, those are all bold things. And Roquan obviously showed his respect in in those comments as well. But what Roquan was trying to get across there, at least in my opinion, is that Baltimore's coverage packages and just play packages, personnel packages, it can be very complex, which is why, you know, when we look at the stats, Sam and Joku, who, you know, comes on here every Friday on Locked On Ravens and does a great job covering the team. He put out the stat. The Ravens are 15 and 2 at home against rookie quarterbacks in the John Harbaugh era. Those two losses, Mr. Trubisky, Chicago, and Kenny Pickett, Pittsburgh. Again, the Ravens just lose the weird quarterbacks. I, I don't know why. But that's what you have to do, I think. The reason this defense has been so successful 
against rookie quarterbacks is because it is so complex. So spanning across all the defensive coordinators that Baltimore has had, Dean Pease, who is now obviously back with the team. You want to talk Don Martindale, you know, we can talk Mike McDonald, obviously Zach or as well. The defense is very hard to try to pick specific holes out in. Now, again, quarterbacks have done a better job of it this season because they have certainly struggled from a pass defense perspective. Run defense, they're great, right? Run defense, I'm not concerned here. There was big news yesterday. That Brian Robinson Jr. is not going to be playing in this game. Officially ruled out. He didn't practice all week with a knee injury. Robinson is their Best between the tackles, running back. He has 325 yards on the season, five touchdowns. That's a big blow. Their next leading rusher, again, 73 carries, 325 for Brian Robinson. Their next leading rusher outside of Jaden Daniels. Their next leading running back is Austin Eckler, who only has 19 carries on the season for 150 yards. They'll try to work in Jeremy McNichols here, I'm sure, as well. He has 16 carries for 113 yards. McNichols has three touchdowns to Eckler's one. I, I assume they want to use that clear out of the backfield as a pass catcher here. That obviously has been his, his bread and butter over the course of, of his career. And this season he has 11 catches already. So I feel like they're going to try to use McNichols probably on early downs and Eckler you'll probably see as a third down back or obvious passing down situations, but Robinson's a big loss. And especially for a commander's team that, you know, you try to replace that skill set and it's tough. Now, Jaden Daniels, obviously a huge threat with his arm and his legs, much like Lamar Jackson and that dual threat ability. Jaden is the guy you absolutely need to key in on here. And that's why I kind of talked about in the first part of the show. It was a struggle for Jaden and Terry McLaurin to get on the same page in the first couple weeks of the season. But those two have established a great connection. And if the Ravens want to slow Jaden Daniels down, again, I mentioned that key of making him uncomfortable but you cannot allow the big play. Baltimore's passing defense has been susceptible to big plays this season. It's not their MO. It's not what they want to be giving up, but Marcus Williams has been playing pretty bad football this season. I think we can, we can all admit that. And the secondary, while they've had some great individual performers, Marlon Humphrey, who at the time of this recording, Ian Rappaport saying he is expected to play today. So I'd, barring any setbacks, I'd expect that to be what happens. Marlins played great individually. He's had some, you know, blown coverages and things of that nature. But again, some of the coverages by Zach Orr have also not been great. Some of the play calls there. So it's a group effort, right? I'm not blaming this all on the players. I'm not blaming it all on Zach Orr and the coaching staff. It is a group effort, but the secondary obviously leaves a lot to be desired. Jaden Daniels is completing the ball at a super high clip this season, 77.1%, which is in incredible. He's a low mistake player, but that's the key, right? Force him into a couple of mistakes, confuse him at the line and make him throw a turnover worthy ball, make him second guess himself. You know, that's why Jaden's been so successful this season is he hasn't really had to do a lot of that this season. He's just been, he's been slicing and dicing these defenses up and credit to him. He's been incredible doing it. But again, this is Jaden Daniels, his sixth career NFL game. There are plenty of things he has not seen at the NFL level. I think Baltimore has to pull out all of the stops here because when you look at their offense, Washington's offense, they do have the fourth leading rushing offense, which does suffer a huge hit with Brian Robinson out. But again, I think they will lean on that duo of Eckler and McNichols and then use Jaden Daniels as well. The passing offense has been great too. I mean, they're number four there as well. So number four rushing, number four passing. And for Baltimore's defense, we know, we know they're the top rushing defense in the league. They're at a super high clip. They just, they dominate on the ground, both rushing, well, rushing both offensively and defensively. They're only giving up 3.1 yards per carry. So you eliminate that factor of Washington's offense and you can not have to worry about that as a threat. And you can focus more on the pass and stopping Jane Daniels. Now, obviously the passing defense is a different story. They're 27th in net yards per attempt right now. And 31st in yard, 25th in passing touchdowns allowed. It's been rough, but my number one key for stopping the receivers in this offense is just stop Terry McLaurin. Make someone else beat you, right? Dimey Brown, maybe make it be Luke McCaffrey or Alameda Zacchaeus, like one of Zach Ertz, it can be him. You know Terry McLaurin is the best receiver on this team. So we've talked about with CeeDee Lamb on the Cowboys, Devontae Adams on the Raiders, right? You talk about a guy... He, 
Even last week, Jamar, Jamar Chase went off. The goal is to stop the top receiver and make someone else beat you. So stop Terry McLaurin, take away Jaden Daniels' top weapon, and make him beat you somewhere else. That, to me, is a really big key as well. So, you know, a lot of things to look at in this game. Coming up in the final part of the show, we'll talk about players to watch and as well as just key predictions, storylines, and a lot more. So a lot to get to on this game day edition of Locked on Ravens. First, the show is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You're started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bets for this Ravens and Commanders game. The Ravens open up as six-and-a-half-point favorites. So if you like the Ravens from the favorite side, the Commanders from the underdog side, be sure to choose your side on FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com. We're back. Our final segment, Locked on Ravens. Kevin Oshuk is still here with you on this Sunday game day edition episode. Really appreciate everybody for tuning in today, making Locked on Ravens both a part of your day and your first listen each and every single day. Really appreciate all the support that you've gotten here over on Locked on Ravens over the years and you know recently as well, where this community has been growing at such a rapid rate. We're over 8,500 subscribers on YouTube. So halfway to our next goal of, of 9,000. So if you're here with us in video form, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate all the video community support. Also the audio community been absolutely incredible. It's been growing at such a rapid rate. And if you're here with us in audio form, be sure to follow along and subscribe as well to all the everydayers out there. Thank you for tuning in every single day to this show. If you're new to the channel, welcome in. Hopefully you stay a while. And if you're somewhere in the middle, welcome back in. Let's talk about key players, key storylines, keys to victory, final predictions for this game. Let's start off with the players to watch. I think in this one, Justice Hill is the guy that I have my eye on. Obviously, he's been the Swiss Army knife for this Ravens offense, or at least one of them this season. Justice is a player that it feels like Whenever the Ravens need a big third down conversion, when they need to pick up six yards, he's there picking up eight. When they need five yards, he's there picking up six. Justice just seems like this super high leverage player for them this season. In the biggest moments, he's been coming through. So Justice Hill is somebody that I absolutely have my eye on. Tylen Wallace is definitely another guy. Two huge catches. Obviously, he had the special teams mistake in that Cincinnati game. But again, those hu two huge catches couple of big blocks as well. Tylen's a guy that, you know, is not going to go and catch 10 passes for 100 yards and a touchdown every game, but can play his role really well. I think the Ravens receivers have been playing their roles really, really well this season, coming up in big spots for Lamar Jackson. And I mentioned Daniel Falele a little earlier in the show. This is a talented Washington front seven, and this offensive line is going to have to be playing their A game. In this one, I mean, we saw in the Bengals game that Trey Hendrickson couldn't really get a ton going in this one or in that one. But for this one, Daniel Falele going up against guys like Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne, that's going to be a, a tall task. So the whole offensive line, honestly, is, I guess, a, a, a unit to watch. But obviously, I, I picked Falele because he has been improving these past couple of weeks, been very encouraged by that. Obviously, it was a struggle the first couple. But hey, you know what? He's learning, but you can't you can't go backwards on that, right? You absolutely cannot go backwards on that. But I mean, obviously, Lamar is a, a big guy. To, I mean, he's he's always a guy to watch, right? We'll talk about Lamar in a second, just with how he looks so far through these five weeks. But on the defensive side of the ball, and Sam and Joku mentioned this on our Friday episode, but Marcus Williams, someone who I mentioned has been playing pretty poor football, grading out as one of the worst safeties in multiple different categories this season so far through five weeks. They need him. They paid him all this money for a reason. When he was on the field the first couple of the seasons, he was really good. I mean, obviously, health last year with the whole arm thing was another story. But it's been a sharp decline for Marcus Williams this year. Brandon Stevens got picked on in that Cincinnati game. Nate Wiggins had some tough moments. Marlon, I mean, everybody in that secondary had tough moments in that Bengals game. Big bounce back game, hopefully, from that unit. But in terms of keys to victory, I'd say first, you know, we talked about it. Make Jaden Daniels panic. You know, make him second guess himself. Make him put the ball in harm's way. Force some turnovers on 
this team, right? Don't give Jaden Daniels opportunities. The best way to defend against Jaden Daniels is take the ball out of his hands. Don't let him get opportunities to put the ball in the end zone. So I'm, I think for this Ravens defense, yeah, Jaden Daniels has to, you have to take him off the field, get in his head and make him panic. That's the big one. Number two, no big plays. I mentioned how this Washington offense, they can score points in a hurry. And part of that is because of the connections that Jane Daniels has established with his receivers. But you cannot let those over-the-top plays happen. No 30-plus yard completions. No 20-plus yard completions. Keep everything in front of you and play your defense. You know, red zone. Don't let them convert in the red zone. Field goals over touchdowns. That's the big thing as well. And number three is obviously dominating on the ground, both offensively and defensively. It's a key every single week. But this game in particular, with no Brian Robinson, I think as a defense, you can take advantage of that. And then obviously with Washington's second-to-last ranked run defense, you have to take advantage of that if you are the Ravens. So there are obviously a bunch of other things that Baltimore has to do in order to win this game. Play mistake-free. Make sure that the passing offense is humming. Obviously, good coaching situationally for John Harbaugh, Todd Munkin, and Zach Gore in this one. So those are some things to look out for. I mentioned Lamar Jackson. He's been on a tear so far this season among quarterbacks through week five. We've read these stats out a couple times here on the show. Number two in total yards, number two in adjusted yards per attempt, number three in net yards per attempt, number four in passing touchdowns, number four in pass rating, number five in QBR, number five in yards per completion, number nine in passing yards. He, he's doing it all this season for the Ravens, putting on that Superman cape, and uh, he's been incredible. So, you know, Lamar has to be able to – get something going against this Washington defense. Hopefully he can. And I think, again, going to be a, a great quarterback battle between Lamar and Jaden Daniels. Now, final score prediction, I'm going Ravens. I'm going Ravens 31, Commanders 18. I think that the Ravens have this one. I think, again, it's it's the rookie quarterback thing for me. I expect Jaden Daniels to get his. I expect him to, you know, put together some solid drives. But this Baltimore defense is is angry. They're upset with how they've played, and I'm sure they want to bounce back. We know Lamar's 21-1 and one against the NFC as a starter. I expect the offense to take advantage of Washington's poor run defense and get the job done. So I think the Ravens have won this one 31-18, moved to 4-2, and two, and Lamar Jackson moved to 22-1 and one as a starter against the NFC. That's all I have for you here today, though, on this Game Day edition of Locked on Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, be sure to like and subscribe in video form. Follow along in audio form as well for five days a week, plus more daily Ravens coverage, of course. We'll be back here later today after the Ravens and Commanders finish up their bout, and we'll be talking about everything that happened in that week six battle. So be sure to stay tuned for that, and I'll see you right back here later today on Locked on Ravens.